We are in Monte Carlo for a rematch between the middleweight champion of the world from Argentina, Carlos Monzon, and the challenger, Rodrigo Valdez. It is scheduled for 15 rounds, and Ferdy, these two have met before, they don't like one another, it stacks up to be a pretty good fight, may not go the distance. Two heavy punching people, Monzon, an exceptional champion, and Rodrigo Valdez under the capable Gil Clancy. The old Clancy you see there in the red and white with Chino Govin, with uh, Howie Albert, a championship corner. They all look like they're in flip-top boxes, don't they? They look like advertising written all over both of them. Here's Carlos Monzon, incredibly handsome movie star type Argentinian champion, has been a champion through 13 title fights since 1970. Awful lot of confidence in that man. And what a tremendous record he brings into this fight. 81 consecutive victories over 12 years. Unparalleled record, perhaps, in the history of boxing. Not too many can match up to that. And the bell sounds for round one in Monte Carlo, and the action is underway. Monzon in the dark trunks, the black trunks with the red stripe in the challenger, Valdez in the white, and the referee, the very capable... Roland Bacon, who has taken over the uh, role as the main uh, referee in Europe. He's very capable, everybody wants him, and he'll have his hands full today. These two people don't like each other, there's gonna be an awful lot of fighting. Monzo, just one week shy of his 35th birthday, and many believing that this perhaps will be his final appearance in the ring. Monzo, very deceptive, he looks awkward at the beginning. You fight for the first three or four rounds with Monzo, and all you see is that left jab. Every once in a while, he keeps flicking it out, and he holds the right hand back. Then all of a sudden, you find out you're getting killed by his right hand from the third or fourth round on. He's very deceptive. He looks awkward. He looks crude. He doesn't look fluid, but he is. He's one of the finest middleweights of all time. And I include in that list my top favorite fighter, Sugar Ray Robinson. Well, his challenger, Valdez, is a formidable opponent. He went 15 rounds, remember, just about a year ago against this great champion who has held the title since winning it from Nino Benvenuti back in 1970. You see the difference in size is going to be a tremendous uh, factor here. Little uh, Rodrigo Valdez, and I, he's little for a middleweight, has to come under that long jab of Monzon. Monzon's very accurate with a jab. He just keeps you at bay, so you have to pay a price to come in. He'll come in, but every time he comes in, he'll get straightened up by that jab, and that's the problem with this fight. In some circles, Monzon at 35 would, would be called over the hill, but not this great champion. And he proved it a year ago when he beat this rugged, younger challenger, Rodrigo Valdez. And you must say about Carlos Monzon, he has taken on every challenger that has come. He has not ducked anyone. He's taken the hard fights, and he's beaten every one. Impressive man, Carlos Monzon, an impressive presence in the ring. I've worked against him with several fighters, and it's awesome when you see him stand up with those long arms and come jabbing on. It's, it's almost too much to overcome. Well, when he won the title in 70 from Benvenuti in Rome, they said that Benvenuti couldn't get beat. Benvenuti was a very fine fighter, as was Emil Griffith, uh, five-time world champion ahead of him. Good left there to the jaw of the challenger Valdez, thrown by Monzon, who's measuring his opponent, moving, slipping punches. Valdez trying to corner him, push him against the ropes, but the smooth-moving uh, Monzon, as we move on the 20 seconds in the first round, gets away from the challenger. Tries a lead right hand, follows it with a right to the body as we go on to 10 seconds. Very tentative first round. Monzon ending up very well at the end of the round. The bell for round two. And out they come to the center of the ring. Valdez, the challenger in the white trunks. Monzon, a long time middleweight champion in the red trunks with the red stripe with the, dark, with the black trunks. Valdez starting right off the bat with double jabs, trying to triple up on the jabs if he can, following the frenetic instructions of Gil Clancy, who really builds a fire under a fighter between rounds. He knows that Valdez has got to stay up, got to stay motivated. He can't go to sleep because you don't look for any difference in the level of fighting from Monzon. He is totally ice cold, 100 percent efficient. He doesn't fight harder. He doesn't fight less. He's just perfection in itself. It's up to Rodrigo Valdez to take this fight to Monzon and to force it. He's a heavy punching 
young man, and he could put Monzon out, although no one has been able to do that in his lengthy career. Well, you mentioned uh, Clancy, and you talk about middleweights, and you mentioned Emil Griffith, and I'm sure that Clancy was in the corner when Emil went against Monzon. He was, and he has been in the corner for every one of Emil's fights. He is an excellent corner man. He ranks right up there with Angelo Dundee, Ray Arcel, Freddie Brown. He's among the greats of all time in corner work. Gil Clancy knows how to make a fighter fight, and that's important. He will not let them go to sleep. Well, Valdez, the shorter of the two, bobbing and weaving, leaping once in a while at the good right hand thrown by Valdez, catches the champion on the nose. Good round for Valdez. Valdez is actually up and steaming. He caught Monzon with a good right hand, another good right hand. Those things are grazing punches. They're not landing solidly, but they are definitely putting Monzon off of his game. Monzon is not jabbing as hard, is not keeping Valdez uh, off of him, and he's losing this round. Well, I got a feel at the age of 35 or so that Monzon knows it's going to go. It's scheduled for 15, and uh, he certainly wants to be around at the end. But uh, as you can see, a very eager and aggressive challenger, Rodrigo Valdez. He has to force a confrontation. Oh, oh right great hand. shot. Straight right hand puts the champion down on the canvas, and he comes up and raises his arm as the referee, Roland Dakin, gives him the count. What a shock. Only the second time of his career that, that Bonzon is down, and Valdez is rushing over to try to finish the job, but I think that's a mistake because Bonzon is not hurt. He was temporarily stunned. Another good right hand. He's following him to the ropes. He's driving him into the ropes. Look how clever Monzon is. He's took, tied him up, spun him around, and grabbed the ropes. Well, that's the experience of a champion. Knows what to do when he gets in trouble. And believe it or not, he was, he doesn't believe it, but he was in tremendous serious trouble. And that is the end of round two. Well, they go back to their corners, Ferry, and I'm sure that the champion on the left, Carlos Monzon, uh, perplexed by the right hand that sent him to the canvas and here's another look at it. I for one would like to see that because it came like a thunderbolt out of the blue. I certainly wasn't expecting that. There's the left jab and a perfect right hand that hit Monzon as he was hit, uh, throwing a punch. That's the kind that does damage but look at how fast Monzon bounced up. He looked like he hit a trampoline. He just went down with his knee and came right back up. Well that might change the complexion of this fight because Monzon finds himself for the second time in a career behind in a fight, finds himself having gone down and felt the power of little Rodrigo Valdez, who has a dynamic punching ability. He's had 38 knockouts and 59 fights. There's nobody more excited than Gil Clancy as he senses a victory and a tremendous upset here. Rodrigo Valdez shaking out and ready to start round three. And the bell for round three and a shocking turn of events here as the champion Monzon, who has been in 100 fights, winning all but three. Shocked by a straight right hand, flush on the nose that sent him down. He was up right away, and he seems uh, to recover. And the cobwebs perhaps uh, disappeared from the head of the middleweight champion of the world, shown here again being battered by the game challenger, the shorter of the two, what is facing us now in the white trunks, Rodrigo Valdez. Valdez with great power in his right hand. Knows he can land that punch down. Now has the confidence to know that the great Carlos Monzon can go down. Perhaps this is the night that Carlos Monzon gets to the end of his career. This is the night that he goes into retirement. Let us see. Rodrigo Valdez, if it's up to him, will land that right hand over and over again. Monzon doing what he does best. Very cool. Stands up there, puts the left hand in, repeats it two, three, four times, and then let's fly the right hand. He's in no trouble, folks. He's in no trouble. He's back to being Carlos Monzon again. Well, we're in round three, and you can see Valdez. He pulls that right hand, sort of, sort of cocks it back, and uh, like a cobra getting ready to strike. Misses a left hand and almost falls through the ropes. And good sportsmanship on the head on the hand of the champion who could have perhaps rushed in and uh, taken advantage of that slip by Rodrigo Valdez. It sent him reeling into the ropes. Carlos Monzon, like most Argentine fighters, are very aware of the rules of sportsmanship. They are very clean fighters. Uh, boxing is a very, very big sport in Argentina. They produce a lot of great champions, and uh, the country is just populated 
by a, a great deal of young men who wish to become like this man, Carlos Monzon. We're in round three. It's scheduled for 15. It's from Monte Carlo. This is Bob Hellerin along with Dr. Ferdy Pacheco, the fight doctor, the veteran of many, many ring wars, working in the corner of Ali. Pacheco has a good right hand there thrown by Valdez. Another catching the good right, right side of the face of the champion. Another good right hand by Rodrigo Valdez. And he keeps throwing it as, as if to say, let me see, how did I do that and knock him down? And he never quite lands flush on the face again because you don't catch a great champion like Carlos Monzon making the same mistake twice. Less than 30 seconds now remaining in round three. It was round two, the previous round, that Monzon went down. But a punch like that, only the one he threw in round two landed. That one just grazed the side of Monzon's face. But you got to admire Valdez's grittiness. He's right in there. I mean, he took the last round big, and he thinks he can take this round, and he has taken this round. Uh, we're counting down now. Less than 10 seconds, and as uh, the champion flares back and tries to get even here in this fight. Well, the referee, Roland Dakin, calls the two fighters to the center of the ring as the bell sounds, and we are into round four from Monte Carlo. 13 consecutive title defenses by the man on the right of your screen, the champion of the world, the middleweight champion, who has also won 18 straight. Good left hook under the chin, uh, sort of an uppercut, Ferdy, that it, caught Valdez coming in. That's exactly what it was. He repeated a lot of jabs, and just as he had him bent over, he came up with a left uppercut. It was a thing of beauty. Monzon's jab's a thing of beauty. I mean, any young kid watching this fight has got to understand that the jab is what makes a great champion and what makes the other punches work. You just have to watch this man. A few rounds of watching Monzon, and you're convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that the left, the left jab is what makes a great champion and what makes a, a fighter successful. Look at Valdez pressuring, though. He, won't, he comes right through the jab and continues to pressure Monzon, fighting deep inside, fighting hard inside, three, four, five punches at a time. That's not up to in the favor of Monzo. Monzo likes to stand away, use his height, use his advantage, jab, keep him off balance as he's doing now, landing occasional right hands. But there's Valdez, gets inside, three, four, five pu punches. Valdez is fighting very, very well. You know, Ferdy reminds me of a, a lighter weight Joe Frazier, the way he just uh, pursues you and bears in on you and does not allow you any breathing room at all. Here he comes in, a good left hook. Of course, that devastating right hand that put uh, Monzon down in the second round. And we are in round four, reaching about the midway point. You can see what happens to you when you relax a minute. Valdez started to come in and then just sort of eased off, realizing he couldn't punch, and he got punched six or seven times in a row by Monzon. Monzon now hitting almost at will as Valdez is willing to pay the price to come in to the territory he needs inside. He's taking an awful shellacking trying to come in. Well, a good right hand and a, and a left cross to the chin of uh, the champion Monzon. He's in the black trunks with the red stripe. Well, there's the challenger in the white trunks. Once again, Roland Dakin not working too hard. These guys have been around between them some 170 fights. And if you're wondering what all that writing is about, in Europe, you're allowed to sell advertising space on your trunks. And they do that. You see that uh, the front of, of both fighters' trunks are covered with writing. Uh, you cannot do that in the United States. Less than 30 seconds remaining in round four. Scheduled for 15. One knockdown thus far, Monzon. Being sent to the canvas by the challenge of Valdez in round two. But Monzon up quickly and apparently fully recovered, being given a little warning by the referee. Keep your punches up a little bit. Now Monzon tying him on, and Valdez trying to throw him back, and that's the end of round four. Look at the champion as he prepares to come out and face his challenger for round five from Monte Carlo, and he leads off the round, connecting with a right cross to the chin, and then repeated jabs, keeping the challenger off balance. A jab, another jab, another one. The fight relatively even now as Monzon has uh, taken the best that Valdez had to offer, taken his charge, and is now making him pay the price, and now he's taking advantage. He is becoming the aggressor, and Valdez fights going back, which is not as good for him as uh, the previous two rounds when he was coming forward, 
although he was taking a terrific beating as he was coming in. Just hang in at long range with uh, Monzon with those long arms and you find yourself hit, getting hit by punches that seem to come from outer space. He has such long arms. It's an incredible experience to face Monzon in the, in the ring. He's much, much faster than it looks uh, on the screen. Well, and those long arms coupled with that height advantage, distinct height, height advantage, as you can see from Monzon, the champion, certainly to his advantage. And his perfect, perfect conditioning. I don't think I've ever seen Carlos Monzon, and I've seen him dozens of times, come into a, 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 a fight without being perfectly conditioned. He doesn't seem to have an ounce of flab on him. He has this thin, muscular body, like a tight coil spring, and he lets it fly from all angles. He's willing to fight three minutes of every round. There's Gil Clancy. Little look of worry, Chino Govin, Howie Albert, the usual championship corner of Gil Clancy, who is more than anxious to win the title, more than anxious to finish the career of Carlos Monzon if he can, but it's easier said than done. Valdez back to the attack. Well, he's biggest weapon thus far the one he knocked him down uh, Monzon down with is that right hand he just sometimes even leads with it and uh, you'd think that on a great champion like Monzon he wouldn't get caught with a right lead but there's a vicious left that uh, circles around and misses well obviously it's to Valdez is a uh, advantage to stand toe to toe with Monzon if he will but Monzon won't look at the way he uses that jab he just keeps him off it's it's almost a sword fighting it's almost a rapier like thrust and the bell about to sound there it is for round five we're back in Monte Carlo where the world's middleweight title is being contested and there is a look at the challenger Rodrigo Valdez he knocked the champion Monzon down in round two but since then, rounds four, five, and just moments ago, round six, all belonging to the champion Monzon as we get ready for the start of round seven. And there's the bell, and away we go. Gil Clancy working in the corner had the sad uh, obligation of working with Emil Griffith on this night. He lost his fight to Alan Minter and retired after a long and illustrious career. So now here he is, the end of one career, the beginning of another. He wants to get that middleweight championship back Gil Clancy has a championship habit, and Rodrigo Valdez wants to get it back for him. Would like to be another Emil Griffin for Gil Clancy, but he's got one little problem in front of him, and that problem is Carlos Monzon, who has been coming on in the last two rounds. His jab cooking, everything working for Monzon. Nothing working for Rodrigo Valdez as it had in the first two or three. Oh, that overhand right. He almost put it on. I think he bloodied the nose of Carlos Monzon. Is that a little bit of blood I see there? Well, it could be. It was a tremendous right, and that's what he's been scoring all his. That's what he knocked him down with in the second round as they get separated. And uh, perhaps a uh, little frustration as uh, the challenger puts his gloves apart and has a little facial expression for the referee, Roland Dakin. Oh, he just said to the bacon, I couldn't help it. I didn't mean to hit him low. And there's that jab, piston-like, machine-like, discouragingly like rainwater pity pattying away on your forehead. It just doesn't seem to stop all night. Already it looks like they're swelling under both eyes of Rodrigo Valdez. Less than a minute here in round seven. It's coming from Monte Carlo. Remember Valdez has been around. He's a former WBC champion. That's him in the white trunks. No marks on the handsome face of Carlos Monzon. I want to tell you, he brings that right. You've got to keep watching that right of Valdez because he's been very effective with it. And the referee, Roland Dakin, warning the champion, uh, Monzon, about grabbing with his glove, grabbing the head of the challenger. As we move under 30 seconds in round seven. I wonder what goes through a fighter's mind when the referee talks to him in English and he can only speak Spanish. Well, I think that's why he does a demonstration. Valdez coming in, walks into a right uppercut, but then counter punches as the bell is about to sound for round seven. Well, the bell for round eight, and both fighters up early off their stools, ready to go back to work, Ferdy. Gil Clancy was gesticulating wildly at, at Monzon to double, triple up on the hooks because he, he cannot out-jab Monzon, but he might be able to hook him. And he has been trying that. He's been trying that sweeping right hand. Sometimes it lands, sometimes it doesn't. He hasn't ha mounted a, um, a difficult or hard uh, body attack. Valdez has to go to the body of Monzon if he, if he hopes to uh, 
short circuit that mobility and sap his strength so that his punches don't come on. But look at the way Mons on his fighting. Well, you know, Valdez set him up for that knockdown. There's a good right. Gets in again. Left to the body, driving it in there as Monzon grabs and holds. Got to give points to Valdez for aggression. Well, and the way drive. he set him up before, Ferdy, if you recall, on the knockdown in the second round, Valdez, he jabbed him and then he came in with the right. And now you notice that when Valdez jabs and gets ready to put the right hand on him, that uh, the champion is keeping busy with that left hand in his face. Keep him off balance. Don't let him get set. Oh, he takes the Monzon a good chop to the left to the left side of the face on a hook and again the referee Roland Dakin is talking to uh, the champion warning him about something I don't really know what it is at this point I didn't see that either he didn't gesture it whether it was been... a low blow or holding or we're oh, in look round at eight look, look at the way Valdez put a series of combination of punches together that's the kind of fighting that it's going to require to neutralize uh, Monzon's advantage it's piling up round by round Monzon is getting the points up there as he piles up points frustration mounts for Rodrigo Valdez round eight scheduled for 15 less than a minute remaining now in the round as once again the fighters come to a clinch and uh, for the most part separate themselves you knows how gentlemanly they are in Europe when they break the fighters. They're used to just saying a few words and having them break. They, they don't get between them like American referees do and put their hands all over them. And that's uh, true sportsmanship because as we said earlier these fellows uh, these two fighters really don't have any extra affection for one another. You can't have. You got to go in there, and he's your enemy. You've got to be ready for anything. You've got to protect yourself, of course, at all times. But you can't be friends. You got to be psychologically, mentally, and everything else ready to go. Less than ten seconds remaining in round eight. It's coming to you from Monte Carlo, Rodrigo Valdez in the white trunks, trying to take the title away from the champion at round eight. All right, the bell for round nine and a good show of sportsmanship as Valdez comes out and they touch gloves, something customarily seen only in the United States at the start of the final round. Low punches to begin. A low hook, which really hit uh, Monzon at the hip. I'm sure that's not meant to, uh, to happen. By the way, we have not commented, but that not that a ghastly-looking uh, yellow glove that they have there? I've never seen yellow uh, in, a, in a fight. This Really, uh, well, the standard, of course, is uh, a red glove, but uh, for many years there were black gloves, only black gloves, and brown. Then they went from brown to maroon, from maroon to red, and now we've got Technicolor gloves, all color gloves, light blue gloves, white gloves. But this is the worst color I've seen yet. But back to the action. They still feel the same when they hit, no matter what color they are. And both of these fighters are feeling the power and the punching of not only the champion right there on the close-up Carlos Monzon, but the worthy challenger, the former WBC champion of the world, middleweight champion, Rodrigo Valdez. You know, Tracking Ro Monzon now into a corner, and he comes out fighting, and they clinch, and Roland Dake and the referee separates him. Yes, Rodrigo. Notice that every time that Rodrigo starts the mount of body attack, which he's very, very good at, to get under the mount of body attack, he gets powdered on the way in. Right now, he's fighting very well for the beginning of this round. He's, he's energetic, he's aggressive, He's trying to smother uh, Carlos Monzon, trying to get under that jab and get in there. But Carlos has it all figured out. He just steps back a couple of steps, lets fly three or four jabs as he's moving back, comes back with a right hand, just seems to have everything programmed and diagnosed and worked out. I got a feel that the challenger, Valdez, in the white trunks, since there's been rumor that Monzon could possibly retire after this fight and vacate the title, that Rodriguez is saying, boy, if I get by this guy, I've got it made. I don't have to face him again. I wouldn't know why uh, Carlos Monzon would want to retire except for uh, boredom of the activity. He's been a champion so long because I don't think there's anybody in the horizon that can beat uh, Carlos Monzon. He is just a machine. Right now, Rodrigo Valdez is giving it an epic try. He's really trying hard, but as the rounds filter by, you... oh, look at that. Left and a right, a left and a right. The right hand landing flush on Rodrigo Valdez's chin and sometimes you have to wonder what is holding Rodrigo Valdez up because if there's a heavy puncher in this division it's been Carlos Monzon. 
They clinch one of the few times in this in this fight. The referee again with his genteel way of separating the fighters. A hook that did not land, but it was a wonderful idea by Rodrigo Valdez. Well, we're in round nine. It's scheduled for 15. Again, tremendous action here, exchanging back and forth. Monzon scoring heavily now, which causes Valdez to tie him up. The back and a good right by Monzon, followed by another right at the bell, ending round nine. We're back in Monte Carlo, middleweight championship action. Carlos Monzon versus Rodrigo Valdez. And we're going to show you in slow motion just what Carlos Monzon has been doing with his right hand. There's a right hand high on the forehead, but he'll come back with it right after the left. The left shows it up, and there's a right hand which buckles Rodrigo Valdez. He cannot take much of that action without his facial tissues beginning to disintegrate as they're doing right now. The action is about to start. Round 10, bell for round 10, and the fighters are already in the middle of the round, in the middle of the ring, eager to get it on. And Monzon starts round 10, the way he finished round 9, connecting with the right, and then trying another one. Now picking up the pace, the complexion of this fight changing since Monzon was knocked to the deck for a, a quick one or two count in round 2 by the challenger, uh, Rodrigo Valdez. You can see the pace now being picked up, another right hand, and Monzon now almost able to score at will with his right hand and a very effective jab. He's a master, a boxing master here as you watch him. Jab, get, get his opponent off balance. Jab him again, right hand. Valdez now looking a, a bit confused by the, uh, by the punching power and the versatility. Another right hand, another one. Slapping him and pushing him across the ring now almost at will does the champion Monzon. Really got the challenge on the run here and the game challenge of Valdez in the white trunks fighting a tough game guy trying to come back a former champion himself facing however one of the great champions in the middleweight division of all time it's scheduled for 15 and we are midway now through round number 10. the brown has almost gone halfway through and valdez has not thrown a meaningful punch until just then such is the power of carlos monson and his ability to punch in series of punches all great fighters have that in common they don't punch. Wait a minute. It seems like Rodrigo Valdez is bleeding. There's some blood on the shoulder of Monzon. It can only be coming from Rodrigo Valdez, whose face is puffy and is beginning to look like a swamp. It is beginning to open up, and, well, it should. The right hands of Monzon have been devastating, and the repetitive lefts, two, three, four lefts, and then the right hand. That's Carlos Monzon. Oh, look that's at that. Look at that. Tremendous, tremendous boxing. Reminds you of the great Sugar Ray Robinson. Look at this, tremendous. Beat him downstairs to the body, again to the head. Missing an uppercut that would have put him away or put him in the third row. What a tough customer Rodrigo Valdez is. He has taken a series of combinations that would have decked anybody. He is some kind of tough cookie. But here, here comes Monzon again. Remember, as you're watching this fight, the one cardinal sin in boxing is just to throw one punch and nothing else. And what they teach you is a series of combinations. Now you're seeing it in practice. One, two, one, two. He just doesn't stop with these combinations. you wonder, at 35 years old, how this man can do this. Where does he get that stamina from? You mentioned earlier, tremendous body condition. And that's what Monzon, the middleweight champion of the world, has. And we wind down now on round 10 from Monte Carlo. We're back in Monte Carlo, and we're in the corner of the challenger. Rodrigo Valdez took a tremendous beating from the champion in round 10, and here's a look at it. And we, we see, again, the right hands landing and the series of combinations. The fact that Monzon just doesn't punch one, one punch at a time, but just keeps them coming, and not in any particular rhythm either. Although right there, he's doing left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, but then he doubled the right hand and caught him expecting a left. There's Gil Clancy exhorting him on. He's just taking care of the cut. He's a very fine cut man, Gil Clancy. He's upset at the referee. Okay, round 11, much the same. All Monzon and the bell now for round 12. And here we go from Monte Carlo. It is scheduled for 15, one knockdown, and only that one cut now that you saw being administered to the left eye of the challenger, Rodrigo Valdez. And Rodrigo uh, Valdez is very far behind in this fight. I don't think that... Uh, he can make it up in spite of that brilliant beginning 
he cannot make it up unless he really begins to cook on Monzon. Monzon doesn't look like he's going to have any of that. He seems to have picked up this round exactly as the others in command and uh, really giving a boxing lesson to Rodrigo Valdez. I did not think I'd see the day when Rodrigo Valdez would be so thoroughly outboxed, outthought, and outfought as he has been tonight because of the mastery of that man you're looking at, Carlos Monzon, and mastery is the word. He is a master of boxing. Well, he's given an explicit example of why he's won all but three of 100 fights in his career, nine draws, 81 victories, and why he has won 18 straight, made 13 successive title defenses, and he has not, uh, uh, he has held the title since back in 1970 when he scored that impressive knockout win over Nino Benvenuti in Rome. But however, here's a game challenger, Rodrigo Valdez, despite being outclassed in the past several rounds, here he is in round 12, still hanging in there. A tremendous determined fighter, a former champion himself, showing championship form, the will to stay in there and perhaps pull this out, even though the odds right this moment in round 12 are heavily against him. A true champion never gives up, especially in boxing, because anything happens right up to the final bell, and I've never seen a Gil Clancy fighter quit because he's got a bigger fight coming when he gets in the corner than in the middle of the ring if he quits on Gil Clancy. Well, you can see the swelling now in the eyes, both of them gradually starting to close, which certainly is not going to help his vision any. And limit, of course, his uh, ability to get to the uh, middleweight champion of the world, Carlos Monzon. You see him there in the black trunks with a red stripe. The referee is Roland Dakin, and we're in Monte Carlo as the challenger sort of wrestles and pulls his way, pushing the champion into the ring, and they have to be separated by the referee, who takes a close look now at the left eye that has been cut of Rodrigo Valdez. But much, it's not much, stopping Valdez because he's coming right back. Much slower round, as you can see. Uh, Monzon has put it into neutral for one round. He really had it in gear the last time. Less than 30 seconds remaining in the 12th round. Only three more to go after this. And that will determine whether or not uh, Carlos Monzon, who many say is this will be his final fight, whether or not he's going to retire as he predicted, some predicted he would. He wants to go into acting. This has been his stage for many, many years, and he's been the hero here. He's been the star. And he certainly is that star tonight. He takes a couple of chops, and that's the bell for round 12. And the bell for round 13. Again, they touch gloves in the center of the ring and ready for due battle in the 13th round. The challenger in the white trunks, Rodrigo Valdez, against the great Argentine middleweight champion of the world, Carlos Monzon. Good action by Rodrigo Valdez, who came out hooking just what Gil Clancy told him to do, repeat that hook, and he put in six, seven, eight hooks in a row. It didn't do much damage, but they sure woke up Carlos Monzon. He has got to come on now in the tail end of this fight if he even has a remote chance of winning a decision. I personally don't think he can win a decision if he wins every round. He must knock out Carlos Monzon. Monzon is not at all impressed, and he has gone back to his regular style of fighting. I'm sure that among other words of wisdom and advice that Clancy has let uh, the game challenger know that uh, uh, perhaps uh, he is trailing in this fight, and he's got to put some heat on the champion. And the champion knows it, and he's cleverly just taking his time, biding his time, letting, tying up the challenger, not wasting any punches, preserving his energy in case he needs it. And the rally is sustained by this game challenger, Rodrigo Valdez. Again, the referee, Roland Dakin, separating the two fighters, the champion and the former champion. Maybe working harder this round than he has before as fatigue mounts. Exhaustion builds up. Rodrigo Valdez begins to run out of gas. He is calling forth all the energy he has, but he's not able to get off what he wants, and then he falls into a hapless clinch. A couple of good jabs by Valdez and a good right hand. Another good left chases Monzon and pushes him against the ropes. And Monzon content to come out and grab him and bust him with a couple of shots to the kidneys. They're separated once again, and again they go back into a clunch. And you can see Monzon grabbing with his left and holding the right arm of Rodrigo Valdez and the referee coming in and slapping him away and separating them. 
Monzon is just powdering him with uh, left jabs as he comes in. But the clinches that they go into, you can see, you can't see here, but you can see the face of Rodrigo Valdez. His mouth is open. He's breathing hard. He seems to put everything into one flurry and then falls in, hoping to get some respite and rest. Less than 40 seconds remaining in round 13, scheduled for 15. Will we have a new middleweight champion, or will the great Carlos Monzon walk out of the ring once again as he had so many times before the middleweight champion of the world? Less than 20 seconds remaining now. Rodrigo doing most of the fighting. Monzon content to let it go to the bell. He's not doing much fighting. Well, he's fighting defensively, just protecting himself and tying up the challenger, perhaps wearing him down a little bit. And the bell about to sound for round 13 for Monte Carlo. <laughs> round 14, again in the center of the ring. Both fighters early off the stools and right out there, having not having be told to come out and fight this is their job they know what to be to do and Valdez I'm sure has been told what he has to do if he's to pull this out and once again regain the middleweight championship of the world that he lost Valdez has 14 and 15 to try to catch Carlos Monzon Monzon content to box away jab away knowing he's got a big handsome lead not worried about winning if it goes to decision and also loading up to catch Rodrigo Valdez perhaps with a thunderous punch and knock him out and not have to go to decision. So Ama amazing so how these two fighters are now in the 14th round and really not showing too much fatigue. Uh, Valdez in the white trunks has taken uh, most of the punches, been on the receiving end, but yet uh, he continues to come in. A tremendous physical conditioning and preparation by these uh, both of these uh, great fighters in the middleweight division. Rodrigo Valdez has shown some signs of tiredness. Bob, his eyes are almost two slits now. They're all puffed up. The cut has not been a factor due to the excellent corner work and cut work of Gil Clancy. It has not been a factor at all in this fight. Oh, that was nice. I almost sense, Ferdy, that uh, the champion Monzon scoring there with a good uppercut and then again getting tied up or tying up uh, his opponent, that he's not trying for a knockout. He's pretty content now. He's probably feeling he's far ahead on points. He's not being as aggressive as he was three or four rounds ago. Probably saying, I've got him. I'll just be careful now. Don't get, uh, just be cautious and don't get over anxious. Of course, quite, that comes with experience and the ring savvy and know-how. Quite right. He doesn't need to uh, risk anything with Rodrigo Valdez. He has nothing, no reason to gamble with him now. The only thing to do now is to hold him off. There's a minute left in this round. He'll have this one out of the way. One more three-minute period, and he retains his middleweight championship, and he can go on to a lucrative movie career in Argentina. Well, he scores with a good right as Valdez comes jumping almost into him. The referee, Roland Dakin, again, doing a fine job in this fight from Monte Carlo. Actually, the fighter's uh, behavior has been excellent. It's been championship behavior and sportsmanlike conduct by both of them. As we move on to 30 seconds in round 14, a good right there catches Monzon, but he's backing up and uh, taking a lot of the effectiveness out of the right hand thrown by the challenger. Good short chopping left hook, followed by a couple, but uh, Monzon pushes him back with the left jab and himself scores with a right. As we move on to 10 seconds now, and once again they're separated. And round 14 is about to go down in the record books from Monte Carlo. So now we come to the 15th round of the middleweight championship from Monte Carlo. Well, there's no tomorrow. This is it. Round 15 about to get underway. Both fighters, Rodrigo Valdez, the challenger, first out to meet the referee and his opponent, the champion, Carlos Monzo. A friendly gesture. They touch gloves. And here we go, the final round. Who will be the middleweight champion of the world in three minutes from now? Will it be the challenger, the game challenger, the former WBC champion, Rodrigo Valdez, in the white trucks? Or the very popular, the national hero from Argentina, Carlos Monzon, one of the best ever of the lightweight, uh, lighter weight fighters to put on gloves and step into the ring. 100 fights, 81 victories, 18 consecutive 
victories, 13 straight title defenses, the champion since 1970. Will he go out a winner? Will he retire to the stage, another kind of stage, one that is not uh, in an 18-foot enclosure? But that's the story, and that's what happens. That's what will happen in the future here. Let's see, Ferdy, as we go into the final two minutes of round 15 from Monte Carlo. As they touch gloves, Monson framed the words in Spanish, suerte, which means luck. And that is just what Rodrigo Valdez has not had any of for the past 14 rounds. And some measure of his lack of luck is due to the man you see before you, Carlos Monzon, who has skillfully outmaneuvered Rodrigo Valdez and beaten his face into a mushy pulp. He has uh, sustained a cut over his eye, which has been well taken care of by the ace corner man and cut man, Gil Clancy, but right now it's a different problem. He's not worrying about the cut. He's not worrying about his face. He's worrying about how to knock this man out. Whether he can do it, we'll soon see. We're past the halfway part in round 15, and Rodrigo still cannot find a solution to this enigma. A very smart and clever champion is the man in the black trunks with a red stripe, Carlos Monzon getting in some good licks there three or four straight right hands and again tying up the challenger preventing him from perhaps scoring that miracle shot that would put the champion down and pull out an unseemingly impossible victory here in the final round less than a minute now remaining and that clinching serves to tick off the seconds as the clock relentlessly ticks away the chances of Rodrigo Valdez You'll notice that Carlos Monzon doesn't take a lot of chance in letting him get a head of steam up. He still does enough fighting to keep Rodrigo Valdez off of him. He could have been fighting very hard, and he could perhaps go for the knockout, but he's content to let it go the 15 and win what he considers an easy and sure victory and retain his middleweight championship. Less than 30 seconds remaining, and the clock is running out on the challenger, Rodrigo Valdez. Again, they clinch, and maybe for the final time, Roland Dakin will separate the two fighters here in the middleweight title fight from Monte Carlo. Again, they clinch. Less than 10 seconds now. There and will be no knockout. There will be no knockout. He cannot save himself now. He's throwing everything he can, but it doesn't help him at all. At the bell, both men raise their hands in victory. And we'll be right back with the decision in a moment. We're back in Monte Carlo, waiting for the decision. There's the reigning champion, Carlos Monzon. He looks like he's a winner, but we'll have to go up to the ring now and get the official announcement. There it is, the first official, 144-141, Monzon. And the second official, 147-144, also Monzon. At 145, 143, again for Monzon. Carlos Monzon, the unanimous winner. He retains the middle.